And welcome back to Houston Newsmakers, where I'm joined now by Congresswoman Lizzie Fletcher, Democrat, representing the 7th Congressional District. Thank you, Congresswoman, for joining me this morning. Very busy time. Let's jump right in and talk about the American Rescue Plan. It's a big deal, a lot of money. Republicans say too much money, not targeted enough. Your response to that? Well, Kimbrell, first of all, it's always great to be with you, and I'm glad to get a chance to talk with you and to talk about the American Rescue Plan, because we have just lived through an incredibly difficult year, and the American Rescue Plan really represents that help is on the way, help that people have been asking for, calling my office for more than a year now, and it does really three key things. It attacks the pandemic itself. You know, we are starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but we are not through this crisis yet, and we won't be able to get through until we finally put an end to the virus. So that's step one, and it funds vaccines and vaccine distribution and testing, and those things are just absolutely vital. Number two, it brings urgently needed help to those who need it most to families, to local governments that are on the front lines of this pandemic, to our small businesses, to our schools. These are really essential investments that we've been talking about now for a year. Um, and, and third, it makes healthcare more accessible. And during this public health crisis, we have seen that the health of the members of our community affects all of us. And so during this pandemic, making healthcare more accessible is absolutely vital. And so those are the key elements of this plan. And I think it really is the help we need at this moment. One of the parts of it uh, included within it was the uh, expand Medicaid act it was designed to increase the uh, eligibility for medicaid should states like texas decide to do it um first of all how how is that going to work because texas hasn't shown any inclination to expand medicaid at this point well i do know that folks in, in the legislature this session are pushing very hard uh, but you're right texas has not expanded medicaid it's one of 12 states that haven't expanded medicaid in the last decade under the affordable care act but I actually wrote the bill and introduced it in Congress. It's called the Expand Medicaid Now Act, and it was made a part of the American Rescue Plan because it is so important. You know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. We're in the middle of a health care crisis. We're in a health crisis in the state of Texas. We have the highest uninsured rate in the nation. And there are people who, are, who fall into this coverage gap, people who can't get Medicaid. They make too much money for Medicaid, but don't make enough money to get on the Affordable Care Act exchanges. So there are about a million Texans that fall into that category. About 200,000 is the estimate in Harris County. Mm. So what my bill does is give additional incentives for states like Texas that haven't expanded Medicaid by increasing the federal match for any new expansion state. More dollars will flow to Texas. And like I said, it's estimated to help get about a million low-income Texans access to health care, and it will help address the, the issues across our state and across our community. Um, and there are other states that benefit from this as well. well. So it's really important, and I'm so, I was so glad to see it included in the American Rescue Plan. And I hope that my colleagues and friends in the Texas legislature will take the lessons we've learned from the last year of how important it is for people across our state to have access to health care mm -hmm. and use that uh, the experience we we are having right now uh, to rethink Texas's approach to Medicaid expansion. This bill passed with no help, no support from Republicans. I talk, I'll be talking with Congressman Crenshaw a little bit later on about the hope that there might be some chance for bipartisanship. Are you hopeful that there can be any bipartisan? Uh, I know you're working with uh, Congressman McCall on something, which kind of shows that there is a chance for that. That's true. I think there is, and it's something that you know I've been focused on since I got to Congress. There are a lot of places where we agree. Certainly there are places that we disagree, and that's what we're sitting here to do, is to debate the best policy solutions. Um, but I have introduced two bills now with Congressman McCall. Uh, one, the Lift Up Act, that came directly from the 7th Congressional District and some of our, um, some of our residents who were experiencing challenges in the coronavirus pandemic on top of challenges recovery from Harvey and so um, there's some specific assistance there and then also the Health Act which was my first original bill that passed the Congress with more than 400 votes in the 116th Congress but didn't make it through the Senate so Congressman McCall and I have reintroduced that bill together as well and it is bipartisan and we are seeing there are bipartisan measures um, there were bipartisan votes in support of the DREAM Act uh, just this week and uh, and there are opportunities for bipartisanship because it, it really uh, 
at this moment, we need everyone to come together to solve the, the tremendous challenges in front of us. And while I'm disappointed that not a single Republican voted for the American Rescue Plan, for the aid that I've heard from my constituents, as well as from uh, the elected officials in Houston and Harris County and my small cities within the 7th Congressional District that all can use uh, the, the benefits of this American Rescue Plan. I do believe that there will be other opportunities for legislation, um, especially we have an infrastructure package coming up mm -hmm. that we'll be working on. And I do uh, very much hope that my Republican colleagues will, will participate uh, in, in that work because uh, there's a lot of important work ahead of us. So you're going to stick with me. We're going to do Newsmakers Extra, and that's a good thing because I want to talk to you about the election voter uh, suppression slash enhancements that are going on by Republicans. Also, immigration bills passed by the House. We'll talk about that and much more. Congresswoman, thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for your service, by the way.